Okay, so for today we're going to discuss the basics on how you can access or how you're going to access your SAP on cloud. Okay, um, so generally the first step that you're supposed to do or step number one is to go to the uh, address or the website that I will be giving you later on. So I cannot give the website right now because um, uh, there, are there are restrictions as to when we can give you the link or when we can give you the uh, website to access the SAP on cloud. Okay, so upon accessing yung ating SAP or yung ating dispatcher for the SAP on cloud, you will be sent to this particular uh, interface. Uh, by the way, while we are doing this, I might be scrolling or I might be zooming it in or out. Okay, so depende kung ano yung requirement natin para mas madali natin makita. So, once you are in already in the dispatch, the next thing that you're going to do is to choose a server. When the problem or when I tell you na you just maintain the server or the default server, then you just keep it there. Next is you're going to go to your company. So what, whatever company I'm going to uh, uh, require you to enter later on. So you just look for it on the list. So in this case, I'll just use uh, the demo that we used during our training. And then next, you're going to type your user ID and then your password. So in this case, um, I'm not going to, or you, you cannot actually use this because this is not really your user ID and password. So I'm just going to give you an idea on when on what will happen when you click on log on. So by the way, while you are logging in, uh, there is a possibility for uh, at times for you to uh, have difficulties in accessing the website. Uh, that may be caused by number one, uh, the weather condition. So if it's raining or if uh, there, there is a cloudy weather on your area, particularly if you are using uh, mobile data, then or LTE, then there is a possibility for you to have a problem accessing the website. And number two, if your internet connection is really weak. Okay? So when you open the website or when you open SAP Business One, the interface of the company will appear. So you will now have the select default branch box. So ang gagawin mo lang dyan is to simply click on the box okay? or the default branch that is provided in the box and then next is you will have the confirmation for or of recurring postings you simply close this one we, were, we are not going to execute that you will also have a system message log which is going to be irrelevant for now so we're not going to have this so what you're going to do is to close this also there so for this meeting what we're going to do is to basically give you an idea of the various modules, various tools, and various uh, menus that we're going to access or that we're going to use in SAP. So this is the 100% uh, zoom or 100% um, interface. So you will be able to see that there are various menus here. There are also various tools that we are going to use later on. And these are what we call the modules. Go to the menus first. So the menus that you're going to see here are the usual menus that you are uh, also seeing in other applications. So you have file, edit, view, data, go to, modules, tools, windows, and then. So during our activities or during our assessments, uh, what we're simply going to do here is to cover up some of the menus and then you're going to look into the choices Okay, to determine which of the following or which among the choices is the correct label for the hidden or the the erased portion of the menu. Again, we are not going to discuss further or we're not going to scrutinize okay, the, the various modules and we're not going to into details as to what are the functions of these menus because these are basically uh, going to be discussed in your advanced or SAP Business One Advanced. Okay? So the next thing that we're going to do is we are going to uh, discuss the major functions or the basic functions of the various 
uh, items in our toolbar. Okay. So first, we go to our first tool which is the preview and print. Okay. So while you are while you are looking or while you are checking this video, uh, it may be good for you or it may be advisable for you to also make a draft of the icons or try to draw the icons and then put a label in order for you to be more familiarized with the labels and the or and, or how the tool looks like so that later on when we are having our assessment you can also easy easily determine the the name of that particular tool okay because uh, most probably during our assessment for the first part i'm simply going to give you an icon or okay, we're going to put an icon on the question and then you're going to try to label or determine the name of that particular module or that particular item or tool okay so allow me to zoom in further so that you can see it better so the first one here so this is labeled as preview and print so generally the purpose of preview and print is to preview the document okay or preview the form give you an idea on how it looks like before you print it however i cannot use this for now because i am not connected to a particular printer if i click this uh, it will simply display that you are not connected to a printer but still the concept there is for you to click this have the preview and then click print if you are connected to a particular printer then you are going to uh, simply uh, print the document and wait for it to finish printing okay next we go to the second tool the second tool is sap business one mailer from the term itself it is it is basically an email program that is embedded in SAP Business One, and the purpose of uh, this SAP Business One mailer is to send emails. Okay, send emails to uh, other SAP Business One users. It can be used externally for you to send documents to other external emails. Okay, for as long as you are given authorization to do so. Next, we have this one. This is the SMS tool. Okay, so the SMS tool or the messaging tool or the text messaging tool is also um, used as a messaging application or messaging tool for purposes of sending text messages to certain users of SAP. However, this is not applicable if you are not a mobile user and it is not applicable for now because the this particular program or this particular company is not enrolled in uh, text messaging or is not allowed to send text messages because it is not embedded in their system. But still, later on, if you are able to have this one, or if you have this particular uh, system in your SAP in actual practice, you can use this to send text messages. Next, we have this one, fax. Okay? So from the term itself, this, this is going to be used in order for us to send fax messages to other entities or to other companies, other business partners maybe, or other SAP Business One users within our organization. Okay, uh, but this time we're not, we cannot we cannot use that because we, we are not attached or we are not connected to a particular um, fax machine. Okay, so these are basically so the first four items or the first four tools are basically basically used for printing, for sending messages, and for um, delivering certain items, tools, or delivering certain uh, communications to our users. So that is for the first four items. You go to the next one. So the next four items are basically going to be used later on for purposes of exporting your documents. So the first four items are for exporting your documents from SAP to an external application. So these are the usual. Uh, or the commonly used applications that we are going to use to uh, read our documents or to access our documents later on. So let's go to the first one. This is MS Excel. So whenever there is a document that is opened, if this is active, we simply click this one and you will be given an option to save that document into an Excel format or a text format or other application. So just to give you an idea, let's try to do this. So, I'll open a sales AR document to see for example. So, when I click this one, I'll just try to minimize it. So, when I click this one, the Excel is now 
or the Excel tool is now open or active, when I click this, you are given an option to save this file in a particular file name and choose the format as whether it is a text file, a normal XLS file, the advanced or the improved XLSX format or CSV or comma separated values. And then when you when you cho when you choose already or after choosing the particular item or particular type of file, you click OK and then it will be saved to your uh, computer. Okay, but we're not going to use that for now. Next is we're going to have MS Word. So if this is active, you can actually export your document or you can export your uh, this particular file. Let's say for example into a word format but again in this example we cannot do so because uh, this is a blank document let's try to look for an uh, here this one so let's try to have an existing item with details so if you click ms word what it's going to do is to basically export or export this document into an into a word format but I think it is not active for this particular example because it is not downloading. Okay, you can also have it as a PDF uh, for in, in PDF form. So if you click PDF, you also have access to the PDF format of this particular document. Okay, so there. Uh, in my case, it it has already downloaded, but for the M, for the word. I tried clicking it but it's not working so most probably uh, the feature for uh, the exporting of the file under MS Word is actually disabled but it allowed um, PDF format to be downloaded anyway moving on this is another tool this is launch application uh, launch application is only active or is only going to be active if there are other SAP Business One applications that are linked to your system but in this case it won't be active or it won't be activated because we are using SAP on cloud it is difficult for us to link SAP on cloud or SAP Business One on cloud with other SAP solutions or SAP software applications so just remember this is the purpose of your uh, of this tool to launch other SAP Business One applications that are linked to your SAP Business One. Okay, next, this one is what we call lock screen. So it looks like basically a screen with a lock. <laughs> okay, so this is lock screen. So what's the purpose of lock screen? So basically what you're going to do, let's say for example, you're going to have a bathroom break, you're going somewhere for a meanwhile, okay, for a while, and then you're going to, you want to lock your screen so that no one can access it while you're away. So you click this one, and then it's going to lock your SAP. So only persons who know your password can access your computer or can access your laptop. Let's say for example. So going back, if you want to access it again, you simply type your password, click enter, and you're back to the usual interface. So this is your lock screen. Next, we are going to have our other tools. So this one we have uh, find and add so these are very important tools let's discuss uh, what are these two items okay so let's have this so we have the find and the add tool so the purpose of the find and the add tool is basically to change the setup of a particular tool so I'm just going to zoom it back to 100% uh, and we're going to try to understand what it does okay so for every document okay, there is a there is a setup or there is a mode known as add mode and find mode so the purpose of add mode or uh, add okay, is basically to add a new document while the purpose of find is to find an existing document so to have for you to have an idea of what this means let's say for example we have a sales order here and the sales order is generally when opened 
it is automatically in add mode. How do you know that it is in add mode? It's because the add button is actually active on the bottom part of the document. Okay? So it means that if you are on add mode, what you're going to do is to add a new document. However, if you want to find a particular sales order, since we are in the sales order document, what you're going to do is to switch to find mode. So you have two options. It's either you're going to click this one, the find tool, or simply go to your keyboard and click or um, uh, press on control F. So when you go to control F, it will now switch to find mode. And with find mode, you can now find certain documents here. So let's say, for example, you're looking for a customer with, uh, uh, with a code that starts with letter C. Let's say, for example, that one. So you click C and then click enter. When you click enter, it will trigger the find mode or the find button. So click enter. It is going to look for any item or all items that has a letter C on its name or a letter C on its customer uh, code. Okay? So that's basically the items there. So anyway, that's just an example. So that's the use of the find and the add tool. So if you want to add a document, you need to click add. And it will switch to add mode. If you want to uh, look for a doc for an item or look for an existing document, you click the find button or simply click control F and you're going to switch to find mode. Other shortcuts, okay, if you don't want to click this one, if you want to if you don't want to click the add button or the add tool. You can simply go to your keyboard again and then press Control A. So when you go to when you press or click Control A, you are now back to Add Mode. And then if you want to go again to Find Mode, Control F, and you are now back to Find Mode. So that's basically one of your shortcut. Now we go to our navigation or document navigation tools. This one is what we call First Data Record. So the purpose of the first data record is simply, so let's try to click. So the purpose of the first data record is to simply direct you to the first document. So going back, let's just try to show show it on a bigger on a bigger screen. Okay. So when you click first data record, you're going to be sent to the first document that is available. What happened here for a while, please? I just check it. Okay. Okay. So anyway, so that is for <clears throat> that is for your sales order first data record. So when you click first data record, you are going to be sent to the first document in in that particular. Um, item or the first record on that particular document when you go to previous record this one is previous record it is going to send you to the previous record okay, in relation to the, to the item that is already displayed so take note this is already the first record so if you go to preview if you click previous record it is actually going to send you to let's wait for it to respond So if you are already on the first data record and you wanted to click previous record, since you are already on the first record, this is actually going to send you to the last record because it is just going to rotate. Now, if you are already, if let's say for example, you go to the first record and then you click the this navigation button which or the, this navigation tool which, are, which is the next record, then most probably of course, you're going to be sent to the second document. Click it again, you will be sent to the third document. Click it again, fourth document. So, now, if you are going to click the last data record, you are now going to be sent to the last document that was recorded. Since I am already in the last document, and I click next record, it's going to, since it is like a cycle, it's going to be sent back to the first record. If I'm going to click previous record, it's going to be sent back again to the last record because it is just going to 
uh, put a rotation and send you back to the records that are existing. So take note, we have the first data record, previous record, next record, and last data record. Now we have what we call refresh record. So the purpose of the refresh record is to simply try to check if the changes that you have pres that you have uh, provided or prepared in a particular document actually was applied. So let's try to click this one. So obviously when you click refresh record, it's not going to have any effect because we did not update this document. So that's the purpose of the refresh record just in case your program did not seem to respond and you're not sure if what if the changes that you made were applied so what you're going to do is to simply click refresh record okay next we go to the other items or the other tools that we are not going to actually use for now because these items are going to be used in your SAP advance but I'm still going to discuss it for purposes of uh, you understanding the use or the functions of this particular tool. So allow me to um, zoom again my screen. I'll close the document already so that you will just focus on these items. Okay. By the way, I'll, I'll try to check if I can zoom on. No, so it's actually difficult. So anyway, we go to this one, the one that looks like a funnel. It's called filter table. The function of filter table is from the word itself for you to f to filter the contents of the table so if you want to hide something if you want to have a an app an item visible in your document then you're simply going to click filter table next we have the sort table so from the term itself it's going to sort the table is either if you want it uh, to be sorted from a to z or z to a or if you want to have it arranged in a particular order then you're going to click this one and then next we're going to have uh, this particular tool it is called uh, this is previous sorry this is the what do you call this this is the base document it's the the name is not appearing so I need to check why so I think I need to open a document in order for it to appear so let's try so example this one it's not this just have the last record oops it's it has no link so cannot use that so let's try another document let's have let's have AR invoice because most probably this is the most complete of all just click last data record AR invoice co base document why for a while I'll try to look for another item let's assume that we have this particular document if you open a document and the uh, base document okay, base document tool uh, is activated it means that this is linked to a previous document okay so let's try to click this one so let's click base document and another document will appear let's check what document that is By the way, if you are accessing this later on, uh, there is a possibility really that your uh, system will have a bit of a delay. Okay, so just bear with it for for uh, certain instances or situations. So it's basically like that. So when I click the AR invoice, when I have the AR invoice and then click the base document, this one appeared delivery. It means that. After the delivery, I link the delivery to an invoice. So that was that's what happened there. Since when you when we are in this delivery document, let's try to check the base document of this delivery. It will open another document, and this is the sales order. So it mean it means that after making the sales order, I made a delivery, and then after I made a delivery, I made an invoice. Okay. Now, going back to the sales order, I can actually see that there is still another base document. So, let's try the first document that was created. So, this was actually a sales quotation. So, a sales quotation was created 
before the deliveries and the sales orders. So, we had a sales quotation that was generated. After the sales quotation, we made a sales order. After a sales order, we had a delivery, this one. And then after a delivery, we had the AR invoice. So those are the four documents that were actually linked together. Okay, so that's the purpose of your base document. It's going to, uh, have to allow you to trace back the transactions that transpired in a particular series of documents. However, uh, sorry, uh, I clicked the wrong, a wrong item. Anyway, uh, going back, if you are into a, an, another document, there is a possibility for you to uh, allow the target document to appear also. So similar with the base document, the target document will allow you to look for the succeeding documents that are linked to an earlier document. So if I do this, I have sales order and I click the target document is going to lead me to the same sales order that appeared a while ago. So meaning after the sales quotation was made, the sales order was linked to this one, the sales quotation, and now I have the sales order. So for as long as this is active, it will mean that there are other documents that are linked to the document that is currently active. So that's basically the function of the base document and target document. Okay, moving on, we have the, this is the gross profit. This is the gross profit pool. Um, for a while, I'll just open one document so that we can activate the tool. Okay, so this is the gross profit tool. The purpose of the gross profit tool is to allow us to make computations on whether uh, on how much the gross profit of this of a particular transaction is we are, we are not going to use this for sap basic next we have payment means so the purpose of payment means is for us to basically um, prepare a document that is going to guide us on the payment of a particular transaction like let's say for example we have a sales order the customer paid us we're going to make a document we're going to use payment means or we made a purchase transaction, we're going to pay the supplier, we're still going to click payment means to facilitate the payment to our supplier. Okay, so that's the function there. Next, we have volume and weight calculation. So this is basically um, represented by a weighing scale. So this is going to use for advanced purposes uh, whenever we need to measure the volume and the weight of a particular item that we are selling. Okay. Uh, transaction journal, uh, this is not going to be used for basic, this is going to be for advanced. So we're just going to show it for purposes of allowing you to see what it looks like. And we have journal entry preview also. This is for advanced purposes only. We have the last few sets of our um, tools. So I cannot zoom in further, so I'll just zoom it out. I hope you can see the items. So we have, after that, where we have the other remaining tools here. I'm just going to show it to you. Okay, so we can know what are the functions of these tools. So for a while, uh, I think the system is having a, okay, there. So this one is layout designer. So this is going to be used for us to modify the design of the interface of the SAP Business One. So we're not going to use that. Okay. Next we have, what's this one? This is form settings. So form settings is going to be used also for you to change the setup of a particular document or form. So let's say for example, I'm going to click delivery. So delivery is a form or a document. Okay, once it is active, I can click form settings and from there, I can actually modify the row format, document, okay, table format, and others. Okay, so this is similar to um, basically changing what are the tools or what are the items that's going to be visible and um, inactive. Okay, so basically, that's the purpose of form settings. Okay. 
So next is we have the query manager. Query manager is for advanced and uh, for advanced purposes, the purpose of this one is to look for certain items that will qualify our query. So again, this is for SAP Advanced. We'll discuss this in Acom PTR2. We have live collaboration and we have send to conversation. So the only difference between the two is, let's try to zoom if you can see it, okay? So the only difference between the two is live collaboration does not have an arrow on the lower left portion. Because uh, live collaboration is for real-time messaging to your uh, companions or to your office mates, but this is not active for SAP Business One on cloud. And then we have sent to conversation. This is for offline messaging. So if in case you're uh, the one you want to communicate with is offline, you send to conversation so that when they are online, they will be able to see it. We have the workflow work list. Okay, so this is basically a checklist of what you need to do. So if you click this one, you're basically going to be given uh, a list or a sort of uh, sort of a checklist and a calendar of what you are supposed to do. So this is the workflow work list. So of course this is empty because we did not put any work work item. Uh, next we have the calendar. Uh, sorry. We missed one. So this is message alerts overview. So the purpose of the message alerts overview is for us to see certain alerts that needs our attention. This is empty for now because we do not have existing concerns that needs to be addressed. So we can use this to message back or to respond to certain queries. And then we have the calendar. The purpose of the calendar, this one, is to simply check your calendar. So that's a normal calendar to know what tasks are supposed to be done and it is linked to what we call the workflow worklist. Okay, we have also this one, uh, default branch. So this was the, this is the box that, uh, 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 that was opened or that automatically popped out when we opened the system. The purpose is for us to choose the default branch. Of course, when Whenever this appears, when you open your when your when you open your system, always choose the default item that is shown. And then finally, we have my personal settings. This is where you can change the details of your document or change the details of a particular user. So in this case, this is uh, the account of Mamroda. We use this for the training. And then we have context help. Context help is for purposes of asking. Um, for or asking certain queries, but of course this was intentionally um, this was intentionally disabled so that students will not cheat in the activity. Okay, last two items. We have the cockpit management and the apply original cockpit template. Uh, we are not going to use this because we are not in cockpit mode. Okay, so finally we are in the last portion of our interface. So that uh, the overall items that you are seeing here is what we call, or the, the overall screen that you are seeing here is what we call the user interface. So we are done with the menus, we are done with the tools. We are now going to discuss, or basically not really discuss, but to show you the various modules. So the, one of the features of SAP Business One is it contains 13 modules and each module is going to be used for specific purposes, of course. Uh, for now, we cannot discuss that in detail. So what we're going to do is to simply uh, uh, help you identify and uh, familiarize yourselves with the icons related to a particular module. So allow me to, okay, to zoom in. So this is the icon for administration. So the administration module looks like a document with a star here, okay, or a ribbon. So administration. Next we have financials. So that's another. Just uh, check the icon. Check the icon of the financials because that's basically what we are going to assess later on in our quiz. We have opportunities. So this is where we uh, create. Uh, potential transactions, potential business transactions. We have sales AR. 
So, sales AR is for our uh, sales transactions. Purchasing AP is for our purchase transactions. Business partner is where we keep the database and the details of the business partners that we have such as suppliers and uh, customers. Banking is for payments and collections, of course, or for our transactions. Inventory from the term itself, this is for uh, purposes of managing the database and the uh, um, information relating to our inventory. Production is for manufacturing purposes if we are going to produce a particular product. MRP is for resource planning. We will discuss this in detail. However, this is for advanced already. So most probably we will not have this during SAP Basic. Uh, service. Okay. Service is basically for um, warranties and other solutions in relation to our provision of goods. Okay. We have human resource to manage our employees and other personnel. And finally, we have reports for purposes of um, providing or extracting accounting and non-accounting reports. So that's uh, basically the content of our SAP Business One interface. Okay, so allow me to zoom out. So all in all, this is going to be the interface of SAP. So for this time, this is what you're going to do. You simply need to internal. You simply need to understand the and memorize. Okay, the tools, the modules, and the menus as well as the icons that are related to a particular um, module or a particular tool. And then for our assessment next meeting, we are simply going to uh, have a short assessment which will focus on the interface or the user inter interface of SAP. So that's it for today. Okay, I'll see you next meeting.